Uh, oh boy, you've got a real working shack and a real. Working... I don't have any background other than my real place. Yeah. You know what? This is more. This is what it's about. The same thing with my background. This is this real. Is shack. Yeah. I, I mean, you can't see all the mess on this desk. So I have an L-shaped shack, and and I'm on the part where. Where I do my work and my projects. That's the clean part. Yeah, I can see. Well, it's clean today <laughs> because I have all the computers set out here. Mm. I, have, I have three computers running, uh, but so you get to see the the ham station there, which is not being run because I'm playing software engineer instead. Let, let me ask you a Zoom question. So, I'm wearing nice set of headphones. I can hear everyone clearly. A little mic here. If I play a sound next to me in a speaker. Will Zoom allow me to? Uh, will Zoom allow that sound to come through my mic, and you guys will hear it? What What's the sound of? A different FL, different you know, sound card sounds. It's coming uh, out of a little speaker two feet away. Can I try? But is it? it? Is it coming out of a sound sound stream on your computer? No, no I'm getting acoustically. Cut. Let me just try it and see because if. Because if, if it's on the same computer that you're logged into Zoom with, you should be able to choose it as a source, down where your microphone is. So if you do that up arrow, it might be a source from there. That'll disconnect my mic. Like it would. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me just see if it acoustically couples. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. Then we're it's good. Working fine. Okay. Good. I just let me turn that off again. Um, are you are yeah. you going to cover Olivia in your talk? Well, I was I, just going to ask. No, not real. <laughs> uh, you know, it's just one of many modes. Um, I looked. I didn't read everything so carefully. I looked at the other kind of, you know, sound card stuff, and someone's talking about FT8, someone's talking about Olivia. So now, I didn't Olivia want to concentrate on anything. I just wanted to talk about sound cards in general. How do they work? Yeah, the Olivia guy, I don't know where he went. So. No, that's all right. <laughs> he, Olivia, may not, he may not have to. It's just we'll another diddly diddly. Um, but I thought it might be fun to just let folks who have never heard what these are like to hear the sound on a Zoom, you know, setup. I have heard and them And I'm all. tuned in right now on 80 meters, but I was going to think, well, if folks are home, I could ask them tune in to 40 meters. You ought to be able to hear Philadelphia. Yeah. You know, the, but uh, no, it's better if I can just play the sound acoustically coupled. I'm good. I've heard every one of these sounds because when I'm on 20 meters or 40 running a pile up in a contest, those sounds end up right on my frequency. Always. <laughs> I just see a, a note kind of popped up from Paul, who I know. What frequency? I'm not going to tell you, Paul. <laughs> and then he'll call me and I'll get distracted by, you know, <laughs> we're good friends. Um, Paul, which Paul? KD2DO, New okay. York, Paul. Oh, okay. We we have, you know, like about seven Pauls, 14 ah. Bobs, you know, so. <laughs> well, we're the uh, NBEMS. <laughs> Folks, um, yeah, so we run the weekend nets on 80 meters, and wow, we're getting. Sometimes we approach 90 check-ins, and it's like, yeah, it's, it's like, uh, it's kind of fun though to get good propagation from 10 miles away to 500 miles away. Sunday mornings, uh, you know, eight to 10 in the morning. Uh, there's no W1AW. <laughs> so like, you're outside of Philly. Just west of Philly, Westchester, PA. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> I, I put a pretty good signal down there. Yeah. You're, you're, well, I was going to get on 40 meters, but I thought, no, actually, uh, I mean, what's making the sound is FL Digi, and I'm actually going at the monitor port of my radio. So I'm actually transmitting. I can set it for one watt or something. But I thought maybe what I ought to do is say to folks, hey, if your HF radio is next to you, listen to my actual radio transmission on blah, blah, blah. But I'm not going to tell anyone to do that. <laughs> That's okay. That's too many headphones, too complicated. Yeah, he says I'm trying to track three computers here, and I'm I want to listen to the other <laughs> the other panel, which is really good. But you know, I got to do this too. It, it's actually better because when I run the live show, I got to run in and out of rooms all the time. This I can yes. just you know, yeah, use the, use the headphones and hear it. It's it's kind of I don't know. This is kind of nice. Uh, I'm getting to meet everyone. I'm getting to see all the panels, all the forums, and whatever. Uh, you know, and my legs will not be killing me at the end of the day. And we don't see what you're wearing below your waist. That's <laughs> right. You don't. You, you know, it's funny. Know. When the Zoom stuff started, people were complaining, oh, we wish we could get together or coffee and donuts and, you know, it's social time. But actually, it's worked out with a little more experience. Yeah. That, that's Zoom it, has right. really been, you know, some folks don't like to drive at night. Some, hey, you know, for whatever reason. Yeah. Who called? Yeah, I did. You're right here. 
Yeah, I want to thank you for getting on Tom Millen, the W5K view last Tuesday night and talking about this. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known about it. Oh, good. Good. Yes. Uh, that, that, that's the whole idea. So I, we're, we're ready to start. So okay. uh, welcome to So Gary. I just turn on screen share? So yeah, I, 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 was the, I was the guy that won the antenna on a Tuesday night. Oh, they, great. They, yeah, they, super. <laughs> So we have uh, Barry K3 EUI is going to talk about the various digital modes. Uh, and, and there's a lot more digital modes besides FT8, by the way. And he's going to talk about them and play sounds with them or whatever. So have yourself a good time. Barry, go right ahead. All right. How's my audio? Still okay? So, audio is great. All right. And do you see the FL Digi window here? Yes. Oh, okay. So I have a PowerPoint, but I thought before we start, um, I have the FL Digi program hooked up to a HF radio. I'm not going to tell you what frequency I'm on, but I thought it might be fun to just play different sound card uh, modes over Zoom. You're just going to hear the sound. And just to see all the varieties of sounds one can make with, you know, software and a sound card. So you're not going to he hear or see the RF I'm generating. But... Uh, you know, the oldest mode, and you can actually send CW by injecting audio tones into a sideband radio rather than, you know, keying a carrier on and off. So I just made up a little macro that says, you know, CQ a couple times. I'm going to stay at about 1500 hertz pitch, which is kind of high and annoying for CW. But, you know, just here's one of the oldest modes, CW. There we go. You know, everyone who copies CW. Let me see if I can make the font a little bigger, and then you guys can see this better. That'll probably be a little better. So, you know, did that sound come out okay? Uh, yes, it did. Thank okay. you. Okay. So CW, we all recognize. Uh, the next that I thought I'd demonstrate is the traditional RIDI sound. Yeah, this is bigger now. So, of course, RIDI is taking the information, the zeros and ones of the letters and numbers, and converting that into two tones, at least tones that we hear on you know, our radios. They're two RF frequencies. So here's a CQ using traditional RIDI. That come come out okay. So we're good. Okay. So you know all we're doing is using sound cards to play different sounds going into the radio somewhere. Uh, on some radios, you can go into the microphone jack. You got to be a little careful with that. On some radios, there's a data jack of some sort. Now we're talking about analog audio here. Um, the only thing digital is in the you know computer. So they're the two very common old digital modes. I would call CW a digital mode. So uh, about 1990s, uh, a new mode came out called PSK31. Let me play a little CQ of PSK31. It's a completely different sound. Now, if you were looking at my waterfall, you'd see that's a really narrow mode, and that's what made it so popular. Uh, PSK31 is generated as a sound in a sound card, and then inj just injected into the radio. What's the purpose of the radio? The radio just converts that sound to an RF wave, whatever frequency you want. So your radio is what you might call an up converter. It's converting sound into an RF uh, wave. So that was very popular. Oh, man, just everyone dropped RIDI, and uh, a lot of people actually dropped CW to get on PSK31. And it was really fun. It's narrow, so, you know, you can get a lot of signals in one passband. You can work the world. It doesn't take much power. All kinds of things happened after that. Um, I'm going to play one that I like to use on our 80-meter net. It's called Thor 22. Completely different sound. I'm still centering it at 1,500 hertz. There's the little CQ with Thor.
And look at the waterfall. So that's completely different. It's still one tone at a time. Dee 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 dee. In fact, I can listen to this and I can almost lip read Thor. I don't need the computer anymore. Um, it's about 500 hertz wide, so it's a little wider than typical CW. It's a whole lot wider than PSK31, but it has all kinds of advantages, Thor, over the other digital modes. Uh, here's another popular one on HF called MFSK, and I'll set on MFSK the 32 mode. It's still about five, 600 hertz wide. Very useful for transmitting data like uh, emergency messages. Different sound a little bit. Listen to how it starts. So I don't know if you heard that, the MF, and I'm not sending the TXID signals, the, the MFSK always starts with the low tone. Dee -dee 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 -dee. So if you hear something and you're not sure what it is, but you get the beginning of the transmission, if it starts out, Dee -dee 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 -dee, you're pretty sure it's one of the MFSK modes. Uh, someone's giving a talk on Olivia, so I don't want to steal their thunder, but listen to the beginning of Olivia. It's very characteristic and unique, the beginning. Notice the prints in bursts. Oh, and you hear the end, boo beep, boo beep. <laughs> so Olivia is really fun to work with. Um, now that particular Olivia 8500, it's about 500 hertz wide. So again, it's a little wider than CW. Whoa, it copies down to like minus 14 dB. I mean, signals that are really so faint, you're not sure they're there. In headphones, I'm not sure if I'm hearing anything. And I've had QSOs with Olivia that go way, way down. So you don't need much power, you don't need a great antenna, you can still work the world. Um, here's a very common mode I hear now, uh, MT63. It's completely different sound. I'll let you hear it. And you can see what I wanted to demonstrate. It just goes on and on and on, and I'm getting more print. Yes, because it's redundant in both frequency and in time. I don't think any other mode. Maybe Vera does that. So it's sort of like saying, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> um, it works amazingly well, even with what's called acoustic coupling. No, no interface. Uh, it works great on 2 meter and 440 FM. We've tra uh, handled all kinds of emergency traffic with MT-63 and acoustic coupling. Um, that means it's very robust. Once I did MT-63 in my car during an emergency, I was at the station at a hospital, an ambulance came be in behind me with the sirens on. MT-63 ignored it during one of my transmissions. I thought, oh, man, this, this siren's going to wipe out my transmission. No, MT-63 just ignored the siren. All right, so I'm going to close FL Digit. And there's a gazillion other modes, but I thought, all right, just to give you a feel for this. All right, so now let me uh, share something else. If I can get my... I think I have to stop sharing and then reshare or something. I did something wrong. Did this come up? Did that come up? Yeah. Okay, so let me go to slideshow and we'll start the actual slideshow. All right, here we go. So um, here's what I'd like to do. I mean, you could talk hours about sound card modes. If you have a question, don't wait till the end. Just, you know, hit the space bar and unmute. I see there's 63 participants, so, you know, <laughs> be judicious about that. And if you don't get a question answered, uh, write to me off the list, k3euibarry at gmail.com. And I can uh, talk about any of these modes. So sound card digital modes, what do you know? 
they're a lot of fun. Um, they're not so much fun, I guess, if you don't like to type, because almost all these involve some typing rather than, you know, a real microphone. So we just did this, listen to some of them. So um, basically, what do you need? Uh, most radios have a microphone jack. Most radios have a speaker or a headphone jack. That's all you actually need. You want to take your sound card, though, and link it to either the mic or the speaker jack, or perhaps a newer radio has a data jack. So what does that mean? Well, the data, again, this is, we're talking about analog signals. You're getting uh, transmit and receive audio in and out. You also have to have a way for your software to transmit and then go back to receive. So you need what's called a push to talk, PTT, means send. Or maybe you have a gadget that uses a VOX, a voice-operated relay. And you need a ground. So you just basically need four wires. You want to probably have a pretty good cable so you don't get RF in it. That's all. It's really pretty simple. Not very expensive either. So the kind of interfaces that one put together or you buy, you, you want to be sure you got the proper receive and transmit levels. You don't want to distort, especially over sideband. Um, you've got to have some means to send, and it's often using a COM port or a USB to serial COM port. Uh, you want to often isolate your audio line so you don't get ground loops and a lot of hum. And you, There's so many ways you can mess it up, but when you do, you figure out how to correct it. RF feedback is probably easy to have inadvertently. Uh, some people like the computer to do what's called cat or rig control. I don't usually like to do that, but if you're in a contest, sometimes that's handy for quick logging. So here's a couple of interfaces that uh, are very common. I don't get a commission with these. So Tigertronics, the Signalink, uh, they came out with a much better design about two years ago, corrected some obvious deficits. You just plug it into a USB port, blip, 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 and then your computer identifies it as a new sound card, meaning not your Windows sound card. About the worst thing for rookies is you're on an FL Digi mode and you're in the middle of a QSO and suddenly you hear over the radio, you've got mail. <laughs> you know, you don't want that. I see Mitch laughing. So um, this little gadget works amazingly well. They're new, they're a little over $100 with a radio cable, you know, to fit your radio. On the back, you see it has a monitor, M-O-N jack. That's very convenient if you want to hear your own audio. You can plug in a little headphone there and hear what your own audio sounds like. Now, that's just your audio. It's not telling you what it's like on the air. That's just the sound uh, audio transmission. Uh, and again, they're a little over $100. Uh, at HamFest, I bought a couple of these, $25. Um, people get them, play with them, then, you know, they want to get rid of them. Um, I've got four of these rig blasters. Again, people give them to me. Uh, a rig blaster is very well put together. I mean, really well-designed, well-built. Uh, this particular old one, this is about 10 years old, just handles transmitter audio, nothing else, no receive audio. And the way it works is your sound card, whatever that is, goes into this device, and the output comes out on a jack to your microphone jack. So these devices, rig blasters, they're designed to go into a mic jack. Receive audio doesn't have anything to do with the rig blaster. It just bypasses the, the gadget. But the nice thing is if I pick up my microphone, as soon as I push the push to talk, it disengages the sound card. Very clever. There's a switch here that says Vox or audio. So again, uh, you can switch from transmit to receive different ways. It also has both channels, left and right, or only left or only right. Uh, there's some programs that just send the audio over the left channel or maybe overly over the right channel. This is hooked up to a little two-meter radio that has no data jack. I think that's one of my old ICOM rigs from, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Works beautifully. Not very expensive. And again, at a ham fest, 20 bucks. You can buy these used. Here's a little higher quality one. Now, this one has its own built-in sound card. This is a rig blaster, a West Mountain radio. Rig Blaster Advantage. Advantage, that sounds good, right? Well, it has a very good sound card in. It also has a COM port. When you plug it in the USB, the computer recognizes that zip, 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 puts in the drivers. So what do I need a COM port for? Well, that's more reliable, push to talk, sending. But I can also use it, very cleverly, I can also use it for rig control of my radio, if my radio has that adapter. I have a bunch of ICOM radios, and they're easy to control with this gadget and with the right software. So very versatile. These are about 200 bucks.
new. Uh, this is a real simple one, and no mic. <clears throat> no mic. It means there's no microphone connection. So if you want to go from a sound card to mic, you got to pull the mic out of your radio. But a very simple isolation uh, set in here, a little transformer, a little level adjust, as simple as you can get. And I think when I originally got this, I thought it was so cool, and then I realized it's almost nothing in it, but it works well. Any sound card. Here's just a USB sound blaster. This is really a very nice sound card, very quiet. But look at the output. They're just, you know, phono jacks. So you have to figure out how to get the audio from those phono jacks into your radio. Make up your own cable. This is the simplest of all. I just tried to take the output of my computer audio speaker out and go right in the mic jack. That didn't work very well. Uh, too much audio and a lot of hum. So I said, let's just try a little isolation transformer. These are obviously cheap, simple Radio Shack ones. Notice there's red and white, meaning stereo. So I used one for receive, one for transmit, and by golly, it worked. This thing cost me about 15 bucks. So if you're clever and you can you know, figure out a way to get your sound card audio into your and out of the radio, that's all you need. A lot of the radios you buy today, they have sound cards built in. These are obviously much higher quality, enough said. So how do you use a sound card to get information into your radio? That is, how do you modulate it? Modulation. Wait, what's modulation? So you're adding information, right, to a wave. So how do you do that? Well, you can change the amplitude, you can change the frequency, or you can change the phase or some combination of these. So the popular digital modes that I'd say popular nowadays, CW. Right away, I had someone interrupt my last one. They said, CW? You can't send CW with a sound card. I said, watch me. <laughs> um, yeah, I can turn on and off audio. My radio is in upper sideband or lower sideband. Doesn't care. And my sound going on and off in my sound card goes into the radio and comes out as on and off RF. I'm on single sideband. I'm not on CW. Does that work? Yeah, you got to be a little careful because as soon as you're on single sideband, you don't want to overdrive the audio because it is audio. So as long as my ALC reads zero and I'm like, you know, 25, 50 watts, I'll produce a clean CW signal. The guy at the other end doesn't know how I'm making the CW. Had a long, long argument with somebody and I said, all right, I'm going to send you CW. I'm not going to tell you how. You tell me if you hear the difference. And he said, by golly, I can't hear the difference. I said, I told you so. So I wrote up an article for QST. It's in the queue, and it ought to come out sometime. Two ways to send CW. The guy at the other end is never going to know the difference. All right, popular mode, CW. Uh, so in other words, I can send CW with my keyboard. <laughs> Some people say that's cheating. Yeah, sending CW with a paddle is cheating too, right? Uh, Ready, radio teletype. Uh, PSK31. So all I'm doing is changing some aspect of the RF wave. The amplitude, the frequency, the phase, or more than one. The JT modes are so cool. I mean, I can't say enough good stuff about Joe Taylor and the, the, the JT modes. I had the privilege of knowing who he was back in the 70s because my background's in astrophysics. And uh, so we had some professional connections back then. And then I ended up as a high school teacher at a small Quaker co-ed boarding school, Westchester, PA. And in the 1990s, I taught Joe's niece and nephew at Westtown School. I was a high school physics teacher. So I got to know that that way as well. So the JT modes, I don't want to say too much because someone's talking about FT8 later. So a question, what do AM and CW have in common? What do... Olivia and Thor and MFSK and Domino have in common. And finally, what do PSK, QPSK, 8PSK, MT60? So normally I'd stop talking, mute, and say, call out your answers, class, but with 65 people, I don't want to do that. So what do AM and CW have in common? They're both amplitude shifts. AM and CW, well, AM means amplitude shift, right? Amplitude modulation. Is CW really an amplitude shift? Modulation, yes, yes, yes. CW is amplitude. Hey, the RF wave is going on and off. That's amplitude. Uh, it's sort of the equivalent of a double sideband AM signal. Instead of uh, hearing a voice, you just hear a thump, 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 thump. You know, the radio's going on and off. 
Now, in your radio, you want to convert thump, thump, thump to D, 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 D. So that's the job of your receiver's BFO. Riddy, Olivia, Thor, MFSK, they are so much fun to listen to because they're pretty. They're all frequency shifts. D, 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 or D, 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 And PSK, they're no fun to listen to, I think. They're just Phase shifts are not fun. Okay, so different ways to make different sound card modes. The amplitude, frequency, the phase. So I thought, well, what are we basically doing? Uh, mostly what I do is chat modes. I like to talk to people keyboard to keyboard um, or send slow scan images. So there are a lot of modes that are very good for that. I don't need very sophisticated error correction and stuff like that. So I can do CW. I can do RIDI. PSK31 <laughs> is still... Someone's unmuted and I'm hearing them cough. Um, so the DX modes, obviously the JT modes, contest modes. Oh, man. When a contest comes, it's like, uh, hold your ears, especially a RIDI contest. You know, where did all these RIDI operators come from? The whole band is filled with RIDI. CW, uh, they're a little, a little more fun. I'm involved a lot with emergency communications, uh, regional and locally. And for emergency communications, what's really important if we're using a sound card is accuracy, to some extent speed. So the different modes that are used for highly accurate traffic, PACTOR. Unfortunately, PACTOR typically requires a physical TNC. RDOP, that's a sound card. Vera, sound card. Packet can be a sound card. Thor and MFSK. Thor and MFSK are the ones that go diddly, 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 diddly. They work really well on 80 and 40 meters. So it depends. Someone, The common question is, why do you have so many sound cards? Well, there's no answer to that. They all do something well and something not so well. Why do we have so many languages? Why do we have so many cars? <laughs> there are a lot of, you know, why do we? I don't know. Each one has a purpose. Someone creates a new sound card mode. Now, we usually describe them in terms of fancy symbols or letters or numbers. I don't want to go into all that, but... The old A1A just means on and off, on and off, CW. Uh, the J modes, single sideband. Uh, the F modes, frequency modulation. The G modes, phase. So all these modes have a more technical, you know, FCC kind of a specification. So the typical ones that you hear today, if you just turn on your radio on 20 meters, 40 meters, I, heal, I still hear a lot of CW. I learned CW as a kid. I love to operate CW. I don't do it enough, but... I can pretty much copy in my head a conversation if it's English words. That's a simple digital mode. It's just on and off RF. Ready? I can't copy ready in my head. I don't think anybody can, but D D D D D D that gets boring, so I turn off the sound. PSK, PSKR, multi-carriers. There's all these different modes, but you hear a lot of these on 80 and 40 meters, 20 meters. All of them... They sound different. And, you know, if I just get on CQ with a digital mode, unless I'm on some frequency where others expect to see it and hear it, I'm not likely to talk to anybody. The big thing I hear on technical discussions is BOD, 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 BOD. BOD's just a technical word for something's changing per unit time. Typically, the BOD or the symbol rate is, is you know, fixed for a given mode. But it's also in the U.S. restricted on the HF bands to below 300. 300. Well, that, that's pretty high, you know, compared to DD, 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 you know, that's 45 baud ready. So 300, you think, hey, that's, that's, that's pretty excessive, you know. But when you're trying to transfer a lot of data, 300 baud could be in restriction. So that's one of the typical discussions now, you know, can't we change the baud rate of the HF bands? So what are the baud rates? So I just listed a couple here as a chart, uh, a table. CW, typical, you know, 20 word a minute, it's about 20 baud. PSK 31, it's about 50. I'm hearing something in my headphones, so someone's not muted. Bruce, maybe, WX10, I'm not sure. I'm hearing tune signals in my headphone. Uh, RIDI, RIDI is commonly 45 baud, 60 words a minute. So the relationship between baud and word per minute, it's not one to one. But look down the bottom, 8PSK1000F. We use that all the time now at Chester County, Pennsylvania for Aries Racy's drills. 1000 baud, that's the PSK1000. Uh, the 8 means it's a phase shift with 8 possible states. 
eight. That's two to the third. So this goes really, really fast. I could send like two pages of text in like 20 seconds. It doesn't work on HF. First, it's a thousand baud. It wouldn't be legal. But on a VHF, UHF analog repeater, a voice repeater, this is really fast. So the other conversation involves how much room do you want to take for your digital modes? <laughs> uh, what's that? Good fences make good neighbors or whatever that is. Uh, well, AM. Uh, I loved operate AM, especially as a kid when that's the only thing I could afford in the 1960s. I had a Heathkit DX100. Man, 100 watts on AM. I could work the world. I also took about six, six or eight kilohertz of bandwidth. But back then, you know, who cared? Single sideband? Yeah, it's one of the sidebands from AM minus the carrier. So you don't need as much room bandwidth to get a good conversation. Two or three, maybe even 1.8 kilohertz. CW, well, a good CW signal only needs about 100 hertz. That's pretty narrow. PSK31, 50 hertz likes. You, you can see why that's so popular. You can get a lot of conversations with signals next to each other. FT8, I don't want to say too much about FT8. Beautiful mode. Look how narrow it is. It doesn't take up much space. MT63, Thor, you know, if you take up more bandwidth, you're kind of a hog, especially on 20 meters. So that wouldn't work well, would it? You don't want to take too much bandwidth. So let's look at these in a little more detail. Amplitude shift, what does that mean? Well, the RF goes on, goes off, goes on, goes off. I said to folks at the last time I did this, so if CW is digital, what are the zeros and ones? And someone said, oh, it's easy. It's the dits and the dots. The dits are zero, the dots are one. I said, no, you might like to say, think of it that way. It's either on, a one, or it's off. The off means silence. So the dit is the on signal. And if you get three of them in a row, did, 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 you know, da. So to send a dash, it's just, you know, three dots in a row. One, 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 that's a dash. One, that's a dit. <laughs> So what does this look like if you look at the signal on an oscilloscope? You see signal, then you see what? Silence. So 0, 1, 1 means sound, no sound, sound, no sound. And of course, from that, you, you can make you know, the Morse code. So most of us played with these keys when we started in. Uh, I have a whole bunch of them, but I just love to horse around with and play. It's such an easy thing to do, turn a carrier on and off. When I was about 15 years old, someone gave me one of these. I could not master this. You push it one way, it goes da 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 da. You push it the other way, it goes da. So you still mechanically make the dashes. Some people are really good with these mechanical bugs. Here's a picture I took of W1AW CW signal. Here you see the frequencies 3581, 80 meters at night. Look at that. Look at that. Very net. And look at the signal, you know, 50 over 9. <laughs> with an 80 meter dipole. Uh, beautiful, beautiful CW. Of course, there's no one there sending with a key. These are, you know, pre-canned tapes, but uh, CW is still a lot of fun to operate if you like, you know, to operate a key. During a CW contest, I tuned to 40 meters. Yikes, there was a signal every, you know, kilohertz or, or less. Uh, so look at the spectrum of 40 meters, 70 to 70, 50, and look at all these CW signals. Pounding the band, many of them, a lot of them, big, bigger than S9. Okay, what's the other way I can send? I can send by having the zeros and ones change the frequency. This is a little hard to explain. So in other words, when you listen to this, it goes da, 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 da. You never hear silence. You also never hear both at once. That's like, you know, the telephone tones. That would be awful if that happens. So it's either da, 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 d, 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 and they switch back and forth at a given rate. So if you look at the zeros and ones, you can see the frequency changing on the bottom trace by the waves are getting farther apart. A little harder to visualize. So two frequencies. So but there are basically two ways to make RIDI. Uh, you can make your VFO jump. So you're sending a data signal to your radio. It says, all right, VFO, change. And it does. Change back, change back. So that's called frequency shift king or direct ready. Uh, and the old timer says, that's real ready. <laughs> but the other way you can do it, it's much simpler. Get a sound card and get the audio to shift. D -d 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 -d. Put that shifting audio into your mic jack on single sideband. So any sideband radio can do it. 
And what comes out on the antenna is dee, 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 you know, the same thing. So audio frequency shift keying works just as well as frequency shift keying, but the mechanism is different. The guy at the other end can't tell the difference. They're both ready. So I looked and I found some pictures of old ready terminals from the 1940s. I don't think any of us are old enough to have ever played with those, maybe. Here's a uh, station from 1950 or so. Not mine. I'm not that old. But beautiful receiver, transmitter. The old mic. I still have a couple old mics that look like that. And a teleprinter. So this is obvious before, you know, computer days and screens. By the 1990s, my son was 13 years old, and he used to use this PK-232 uh, MB. Anyway, what it did was connect to the radio, and if the radio was on uh, uh, RITI mode, I had some old radios that actually could do RITI mode, he could sit there at the keyboard and work the RITI mode. He had a general license as a 13-year-old. And I'll never forget, he was talking to someone on 20 meters on teletype, and this guy was in Argentina and speaking English after he made contact, and the guy says, uh, I'm a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force, and I test, uh, you know, F blah, 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 fighter jets. Uh, what kind of work are you in? And trans, you know, back to my son. My son's 13. He says, oh, I'm 13 years old. I'm in sixth grade. <laughs> so, you know, keyboard to keyboard, you never know anything about the other person you're talking to. So he loved uh, Riddy, and he could work the world on 20 meters. So this is what a RIDI signal would look like on today's modern waterfall. Just two stripes. They're parallel tracks, and they're actually going D, 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 but on the waterfall, it looks like they're on at the same time. You can always tell if it's distorted. How? Instead of two tracks, you see four, six, eight, twelve. But if it's a clean RIDI signal, you should just see two stripes on the waterfall. Here's a program that really is cool, MMTTY, uh, uses a sound card. But it also shows you a description here, which is just fascinating to look at, that shows you the two ready tones. And if they're well aligned, you get these ellipses that are perpendicular to each other. MMTTY is a very famous uh, program for operating the ready mode. I still like to play with that once in a while. So I thought, well, let's listen to a ready contest. And I thought, oh, man, it's like they're ready everywhere. So here's a screenshot of a ready contest on, what was it, 80 meters. And look at these guys. There's so many, they just interfere with each other. And I hate to get on a contest because it's, it's no fun for me. So let's look at other kinds of modes. I don't want to say too much because someone's doing FTA. Joe Taylor, here's a picture of him, I think, when he was a bit younger. Uh, really, really sweet guy. I mean, he's just a uh, fantastic programmer and just wonderful. He loves to share what he knows with others. Uh, Nobel Prize winner, and he doesn't brag about that. So the JT modes, they're called. Joe Taylor, JT modes, JT65. We thought that was so cool. 65 tones. Dee -dee 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 takes one minute between transmissions. But look, it can copy down to what? Negative 24. <laughs> what does that mean? You don't even see it or hear it. And your computer's copying it. About 175 hertz bandwidth. Eh, that's about the same as... Uh, a CW signal. FT8 came out a couple years back, 2017. Eight tones, 15 seconds. Oh, so in other words, shorter time to send a CQ. Can copy down to negative 20. Well, that's pretty darn faint. I can't do CW that faint. 50 hertz bandwidth. Oh, that's really cool. It's about as wide as what? A really narrow CW signal. But it can copy way, way below CW. So that was the king on the block for the last, what, two years. Then he came up with FT4, even shorter transmissions. So you can make a complete FT4 contact with some other station in, uh, what, one minute. Amazing, amazing. Or at least my computer is talking to someone else's computer. I'm just sitting back and watching the conversation. Um, so if someone else is talking about JT, I don't want to go into gory details, but it's a great mode for DX. Much better than, I think, anything anyone could create in the future. Here's what it looks like on a uh, screenshot. Uh, you can see in the bottom the uh, signals are narrow. They're separated by a little bit. But what's amazing, you can have two JT8 or FT8 signals that are overlapping a bit. And the computer separates the two by what tone it is and the timing. 
timing, timing. So your computer has to be synchronized to the real world clock called UTC or this doesn't work. So I forget what band I was on here, but uh, lots of signals and very little bandwidth. So FT8, you can work the world on one watt and a dipole. Really? <laughs> the software is free, really. Bandwidth, really narrow. You have a whole QSO in two minutes. Some people after the 100th QSO say, but I'm not having any fun doing this anymore. So that's the most common complaint I get. Uh, it works really well, but it's too easy. There's a more modern picture of, picture of Joe. He's still in Princeton, I think. So FT8, what's not so good? Well, it's only like 12 words a minute. That's like watching the grass grow. You're limited to 13 characters on each transmission. Um, and the transmissions occur, you know, four times a minute. The clocks need to synchronize. That's important. Where do you find other FT8 operators? Well, that's the key. So the watering holes, as we call them, 3574, 7074, 14074. So if you call CQ with FT8 on some other frequency, likely no one's going to hear you. This was my claim to fame. I had so much fun with this one. I got up one morning before sunrise. I got on 40 meters, and I was listening with FT8, and I heard a CQ VK3LDB. That's Australia. I thought, wow, that's cool. Well, it's night for me and it's night for Australia. Because night for me, well, you know. So let's see here, uh, Australia. That's the other side of the world. So I tried to get him with, uh, I think it was either one watt or 10 watt and a homebrew antenna, and I got him. He came back, so here's our record of our CQ. Uh, the DB is the signal strength, minus five. So he received me pretty well. Negative 5 isn't so faint if it goes down to negative 20. Uh, I received him at a negative 6, so signals were pretty good. 7074 was our frequency. My antenna was a homemade piece of aluminum lashed to a tree. Look at that. That, <laughs> that, that was amazing. I had a real... That brought me joy. <laughs> My computer worked so well with his computer. Uh, and when I wrote to Joe, he said, that's really cool, and he put it in his next book. So... Um, one of the uh, FT8 stories has my QSO in it. So here are the watering holes. You can look these up anywhere. So I thought, okay, <clears throat> and I'm running out of time here. What can you do on a trumpet that you can't do on a bugle? If you've ever tried to play a bugle, you know this. A bugle goes da 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 It only can play a few notes. What about a trumpet? Well, a trumpet's got vowels. What does that mean? You can go da 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 you know. You can play 12-note chromatic scale. You can't do that on a bugle. So what's that got to do with sound and watering holes and radios? Ah, Riddy's two tones, dee, 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 dee. FT8, da, 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 okay. Well, what if I have 30 tones, 80 tones? Can I send more information? Yes. So some of the new modes have more frequencies at their disposal. So more tones, is that better? Well... Depends what you mean by better. I can send more information per tone. So if it's M, F, S, K, 16 tones, 16, right? That's 2 to the 4th, right? 2 to the 4th, 16. That means each da, 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 each sound has four bits of information. So a four-valve trumpet can play more tones than a three-valve trumpet or a no-valve bugle. But then you get the big problem. How close to it can the tones be? You don't want the tones to overlap, right? That's no good. Then the other person can hear the difference. So I show you a couple screen slides. MFSK32 is widely used on 80 meters. All the NBEMS nets use it. So here's 16 tones. They're never played two at a time. That's important. There's only one tone at a time. They're played at a rate of 32 baud, on and off 32 baud, 32 times a second. So it's a frequency shift, and you can see that on the... Uh, oscilloscope trace below there. You see this, the waves get farther apart. They're nearly constant amplitude, nearly. Very, very rugged, robust mode, MFSK32, for 80 and 40 meters. Here's the spectra of it, MFSK32. So this is looking at it from the RF point of view. It's about 500 hertz wide, and look, the signal drops off like a cliff. So you can get a lot of MFSK32 signals separated by a little bit, and they don't interfere with each other. If there's two or three that overlap, forget it. 
Here's Olivia. Olivia is so much fun because you can work down into the mud. Olivia 8, 500 is one version, one gear. Eight tones, 500 hertz bandwidth. And look at the, uh, the sound of that in the bottom. You see two things are changing, the amplitude and the frequency. So it's a little more complicated to listen to and to generate. But again, it's a simple sound card. Mo I shouldn't say simple, but uh, generated by simple sound cards. Here's an Olivia signal. Again, look at it. It's about 500 hertz wide, and then the skirts are really sharp. It means if an Olivia signal is clean, it won't take up too much space, uh, more than 500 hertz. Thor is my favorite. Why? Well, I love the mode. It sounds pretty. I'm a former bassoon player. It has forward error correction. It has something the other modes do not have. Incremental frequency shift keying. It's like, that's a mouthful. It's the change in pitch that determines what character you're sending, not the pitch. So Olivia, ready? Dee -dee 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 -dee. Your software has to identify that pitch. Thor, it has, has to identify the change in pitch from one tone to the next tone. Ah, so what does that mean? It means you can mistune it miserably and you still get full print. It's a good, it's like having a bicycle, two-wheel bicycle with training wheels. You can't fall off. Thor, you can't mess it up as long as you have it on Thor mode. Great, great mode. You can also send small images. Thor is my favorite. Here's what it looks like, Thor 22. 22 is the baud rate. 78 words a minute. That's as fast as any of us can type. 500 hertz bandwidth. Look at, look at the trace on the bottom. You can see the frequency changing a little bit. You can also see the amplitude is pretty constant. So it's easy to tune up, adjust your power. I should say the ALC when you transmit always, always, always needs to be a magic number. Zero. Unlike on phone on voice, we can mess up and have some ALC. You want to keep the ALC to zero. Never use speech processing. <laughs> That'll screw up these things. So I took a RF spectrum. This is the RF, not the audio. And I was looking at Thor on a 440 repeater. Well, wow, it's just sound, right? So I was looking at the sound on the repeater, and this is what the spectrum looked like. Now, this is on an FM radio. <laughs> so Thor, it's just sound. Kind of pretty. Easy to do on FM repeaters. Remember, what we're sending is analog audio. It's not digital till it gets in your computer. PSK, that's the very popular one, changing the phase. I wrote to uh, Peter Martinez, the guy who invented this, and I said, explain to me as a sixth grader, how do I change the phase? He said, oh, it's so, so easy, Barry. We got to be pretty good friends. He said, take your antenna. You've got two wires. Put on a carrier. I said, yeah, I can visualize that. Switch the two wires. That's changing the phase. I said, oh, is that all? He said, except I'm doing it in a sound card. I'm not switching the, the two wires on your coax. I'm doing it in a sound card. So very, very clever. And it took off. So PSK31 was the dominant. Any sound card can produce this. It's not very sophisticated for a sound card. PSK31, 31, 31 baud, that's the 31. 50 words a minute. Well, that's fast enough. Bandwidth, 50 hertz, that's really narrow. That, that's more narrow than CW. So in other words, it's a very efficient use of spectrum. So where do you hear PSK31? Again, it's an unusual mode. Listen where you expect the other PSK31 operators. 3580, 7070, 4, so you see 14070, 21070. So once you get used to that sound and you see it on a waterfall, it's easy to identify. I see there's 72 participants, yikes. I have no idea who I'm talking to here. Suddenly I realized, oh, PSK31, it's not just the phase changing look. This is the view like I'd get on an oscilloscope. The amplitude is changing. Ah, why do they do that? Ah, there's a clue here. In order to keep it very narrow, the phase changes when the amplitude is zero. Now if you look really, really closely at this screen or look at any PSK31 signal, you see the phase, you know, phase is just the time. You see the time flip 180 degrees as the amplitude approaches zero. That keeps the bandwidth very narrow. So what are the zero one ones? Zero means there's a phase change. One means there's no phase change. So this is a series of what we're looking at right here is zero, 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 zero. If I showed you zero, zero, one, zero, 
the one would be longer without dropping down. No phase change. Again, here's PSK31 as I recorded it. Here's what it looks like as a spectrum. You can see why it works so well. That's more narrow, narrower, more narrow than W1AWCW. Yep. Look at that. So in other words, it's not very greedy of bandwidth. So you can have a lot of conversations with PSK31 and make good neighbors. PSK125 a lot faster. Oh, a whole lot faster. I can't type that fast. And it takes up more bandwidth. So that would be a hog if you're just having a chat mode with PSK125. I wouldn't do that. So how about the multiple PSK carriers? If one is good, how about 3, 5, 8, 12? Well, you don't need that for a chat, but you might need that for what? Data transmission. So here's PSK125, but there's 16 of them. It's like having 16 trumpet players. They're all playing at the same time. That's really, really fast. 1,700 words a minute. I can't talk that fast. Complicated signal. But you could send this out on uh, a sideband signal if you're willing to take, what, 2750 hertz bandwidth. That's about as wide as, you know, a human voice. 8 PSK. It's just more phase changes. The angle's changing. Popular modes for MCOM, Thor, MFSK, Olivia. I'm just going to go fast because I'm watching the clock here. All right, so there's a whole nother set of modes that are used um, in WinLink. Now, my, my talk isn't really about WinLink because WinLink is primarily uh, an emergency communication specialty mode. But on single sideband, you can send WinLink modes now if you do not have a Pactor expensive TNC. The new mode is called Vera, V-A-R-A, -A, Vera. Or the old mode would be called RDOP. But can, you can use a simple sound card to do this. If you send WinLink on a uh, FM, UHF, VHF, 2 meter, 440 repeater, you can use FM Vera. And we've been trying it for the last couple of months. It really works well. It doesn't sound fun to listen to, but it works really well. So WinLink is just a way to send emails back and forth using a radio. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. Um, another TNC, a gadget that can send a whole variety of modes, can send CW. It can send RIDI, Amptor, Pactor. Here's getting in some of the fancier Pactor modes. I have one of these. It's uh, able to send Pactor 3, which is like the third development. Pactor 3 is a phase shift key, and it's also really, really fast, and it's about uh, two and a half kilohertz. So it's kind of greedy of bandwidth if you send it on HF single sideband. So I wanted to show this slide. This is a, a pretty old ICOM radio with a TNC for Pactor. To the left of that little signal link, to the left of that you know, little speaker, and below that a little antenna tuner. I'm not showing you the power supply. Here's a complete station. With this, everything in here, and it's all really kind of old, I can send HF or VHF any mode, any sound card mode with a signal link. I can get it on Packet or Pactor with that TNC. That particular radio, it's about 20 years old. It'll work any mode, any band. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. It works well. That's like the Chevy pickup truck. Uh, and I have this next to me right now, and everything still works. And it really it works well, too. <laughs> it's not very fancy in terms of displays and stuff. Here's a more modern Pactor TNC. This costs like 1500 bucks. Different Pactor modes. They're different gears. Here's what a Pactor signal looks like. Well, again, look at the steep sides. It's a complicated signal. It's really used to send radio emails where you've got to be sure you're sending the right information. Here are the, the latest and, and fastest Pactor, Pactor 4. Uh, these are so new and fast, they're not even legal in the U.S., uh, maybe they will be in the near future. Here's what Vera looks like. Vera is a sound card, and it's got really fancy software. It's so much fun to play with. Uh, if you want to look up Vera, just Google Vera. You can get the software. You don't even have to license it if you want to play with it. It has speedometers. It's just so much fun to play with. I don't want to go into gory detail about Vera. Different gears or levels. That means it goes different speeds. Uh, 
tremendously. It, it works well when it's noisy. It works well when it's not very noisy. On FM, even more gears. It's, it's, the, it's the fastest thing you can use in, with sound to transmit uh, information on a 2 meter 440 repeater. We're just learning how to do that now. FL Digi is probably the most famous for emergency communications. Uses a sound card and it generates um, basically messages that are geared for emergency use, but you can use it for chatting. Uh, it's free. Did I say that? Works well on Windows, Linux, Macs. Free. Did I say that? The author of this I know well now because we're communicating all the time. He's just super nice. Answers all his emails. So FL Digi has a couple parts. FL Digi, FL Message, FL Lamp, FL Rig, FL Log. Really easy to learn. In a couple hours you can master this. Uh, maybe a little more than that. FL Rig is a way to control your radio. You don't have to, but it's really cool to do it with your computer. The FL Digi has a way to identify sounds and convert them into the right mode if you're not used to listening to them. It also has a primitive, well, not so primitive, uh, FFT that you can look at the spectrum of whatever you're using. So this is an audio spectrum of whatever mode you're looking at. I'm looking at the clock, and I think I want to stop sharing. Let me hit stop share. Okay. And get out of this and go back to full view and ask folks to call out questions because I'm going to turn off my radio because I'm getting all kinds of sounds here. Okay. Oh, that's much nicer. I was on 80 meters with all that. So um, if you have a question, unmute and call out because I know this session ends at 1.30 and it's already 1.20 something. Press your space bar. Okay, okay, yeah, I just asked you by chat, but uh, I'm not I was reading chat at the same time. I can't do that. <laughs> I only have one head. So ask it now. Okay, I was asking, are you using Windows 10 or do you find that some other operating system behaves better for the kind of things that you do? That's a great question. I don't know the answer to that, but uh, friends of mine who have Linux brag, that, brag of that. It works well. Uh, folks that use Macs, uh, you have to have the software match your platform. I'm just strictly at this point, I've got four Windows 10 computers. No okay. problem. People are always complaining about Windows 10. I've never had a problem with Windows 10. Other than it can accidentally, okay, Paul, I see Paul as a comment. Um, see, I lost my concentration. Uh, yeah, Windows Barry? 10, yeah, wait, Windows 10 can, with privacy, Turn off your microphone. So I, I'm always careful not to enable Windows 10 privacy. Paul, go ahead. Yeah, Barry, no, this is Carl. It's supposed to be done about 25 because the next session oh. starts at 30. Okay. So, so let's do this. Minutes. If you have, okay, if you have a question and you don't get to ask it in the next two minutes, email me K3 Echo Uniform India Barry, one word, K3 EUI Barry at gmail.com. And I'll respond to all emails that sent my way. I, I didn't know what to say at a meeting like this because I may be talking to beginners or, you know, there's so many different things you can do with a sound card. What they share in common, you have to be willing to type. Although someone said, hey, there's voice to, you know, text converters that are pretty good now. I just say CQ into a microphone. It sends out ready with CQ. I'm not there. <laughs> Quick question. <laughs> yes. Um, I joined your forum here at the very end, but uh, do you have any insight on the future? Uh, any new modes coming out uh, for digital modes that we have? Yes, I do, and I'm sworn to secrecy. <laughs> okay. Yes, that's a great question. You know, the most popular modes for, like, uh, DX work tend to be the Joe Taylor modes. Mm -hmm. They're so easy to set up, and it works so well. And did I say it's free? <laughs> Uh, PSK31, I've had a lot of conversations with the author. I said, I don't know how to thank you enough. I mean, the world dropped Riddy to do PSK31, except during a Riddy contest. Um, I think the key is going to be now higher speed within a given bandwidth. And there's tricks you can do with sound cards. And that's all I can legally say. Okay. <laughs> I'm not an author, but I know some authors. Okay. Paul. The IC7300 decodes and displays really directly with no computer. Yes. 
lot of the newer rigs have ability to, you don't even need a computer. I don't use that method. Mine will too. I have an ICOM 7610. It can do a lot of stuff with no computer, but I like to see on the big screen. Uh, that was a good question, though. Yeah, the Elecraft radios can do that too. And I wish I had an Elecraft. <laughs> yeah, if you got the pan adapter, you can actually plug in an external monitor if you got that option, and you yeah. can see quite a few lines of any of uh, PSK or uh, Ready. Works pretty cool. I think half the audience is at least as advanced as I am with this, and maybe half has never tried a digi mode. I have no idea who I'm talking to here. <laughs> well, it's good to review for some people and a good learning experience for others. So it's good. I got through about a third of the uh, PowerPoint that I'd prepared. I made up about 100 slides. So if you'd like, <laughs> if you'd like, email me and I'll send you a PDF of all my slides and you can see what I could have said if I had three hours. <laughs> and we better stop here because it's uh, past 125. All right. Very good, Barry. Great job. Mitch, I, thank uh, you for the invitation. I had fun thank, doing this. Thank you for speaking. This is great. Yeah, this is something that uh, a lot of us just don't know about. So it, it, it's new stuff. So uh, thank you again for doing this. I want to remind everyone that we uh, have been drawing some door prizes. So if you go to the main HamCon page, you don't have to leave the meeting to do that. You go to the main HamCon ham con page and click on prizes you will see some of the prizes have call signs next to them and so you have two hours uh till 3 30 to click on the thing saying claim your prize that sends me an email lets me know that you're here and wanting to do it if you don't claim it in uh by 3 30 we draw somebody else and they get to win it instead so uh, you want to do that so uh let's move i on. have one more thing to say am i still live yeah, you still are. So I just looked at chat and there were like 30 questions here. I, I There's no way I can talk and read chat at the same time. So I don't know how I answer individual ones, but I would say this. Um, all of these modes that I've mentioned work well on a single sideband radio, not even a very sophisticated one, with you know a bandwidth of the same or less than a human voice. You don't need a sophisticated radio to do these modes. You can buy a sophisticated radio, but... I, I've done, uh, you know, some of these modes on a 1993 ICOM, I see 725 that was my son's radio, you know, 30 years ago. It works well. Um, Barry, will you be able to join us at 4 o'clock? Yes, I can be back. Okay, so if you have a question, come to ask the experts later on at 4, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll have a whole bunch of people there moderating that, and uh, <laughs> we'll have a lot of experts Maybe we, you might even get a right answer out of us. We'll see. But uh, uh, Are we all in the same room? Yes, we'll all be in the same okay. room. It'll be, okay. a, be a, real, well, a real big party. 